Hey, Deserve Listeners, 90 Day Fiance. Let's watch. Not much has changed. I, I, I get where you're coming from, but that doesn't change that you shouldn't have kept it from me. You should have said, I want to meet you, but you should know this. I mean, I guess you weren't going to tell me anyways. This came from Elijah, so... I was going to tell you. Yeah, uh, I'm guessing she would have, honestly. By the way, of course, we have to always keep in mind that Alina allegedly has posted things that have indicated racism and harm and hate speech against a variety of different groups of people, including me. As a half-Asian, there were comments about not liking or thinking. As I said before, I have been growing up with the notion, the bigoted notion that mixed race people, in particular half Asian, half white, are abominations. They're disgusting. We are just, I am disgusting. I'm a freak of nature. I'm a product that's to be ashamed of. It's embarrassing to think about. Some young people might not be able to relate to this, but I certainly grew up with that. And it's still present around the world, even in the United States. She essentially said something along those lines. It's hard to know exactly what she meant because it was a pretty, it involved emojis. And so it's hard to know exactly what was behind, but it certainly at the very least it was extremely insensitive. And at worst, it was an absolute indication of an attitude of bigotry and, and hatred against all, a lot of groups of people. So we have to say that every time that she comes on the screen. And people emailed me and said that they were gonna edit her out of the show, but they clearly have not done that. I don't know if that means sometimes they don't invite people to the tell all or they don't invite them back for future seasons or something. I'm going to continue to comment about their relationship because we use this as a learning tool. And I think I might always remind everyone about the context of Alina's comments. And I suppose one of the new things that we can add to the conversation is a lot of people really liked Alina before this came out. And the learning data point is that likable people can have absolutely horrific notions that they have been given by society that they should have known to shed once they reached adulthood and started to look around them on the internet. Like, you know, we don't fault a five-year-old for their racism, right? We all understand that a five-year-old doesn't emerge from the womb or doesn't invent their own racist ideas. Typically, they are given them through culture. So, you know, do we blame a 15-year-old? Or, you know, what's the percentage blame that we put on their family and society? But at a certain point, once you reach adulthood, particularly now given the internet, particularly given how bilingual she is and how seemingly pop culture and internet culture savvy she is, she should have known better and was probably given literally thousands of opportunities to evaluate her racist attitudes and to pull back. You know, do we think that every Russian her age has a similar level of racism and similar racist attitudes? No, of course, there are plenty of Russians who have evolved or grew up in a family that propagated different ideas. So, you know, we just have to put that all in the context. Anyway, so she should have known better and, you know, we can comment on that. Now, regarding the relationship, he she is giving an emotional request, basically, that is saying, have you moved on? And he's saying, uh, no, I mean, this this was just last night. So I'm still in the same boat. I, I'm still uh, in, you know, recovering from what happened and drawing conclusions that you lied to me and then withheld information from me. And then the only reason why it came out is because Elijah outed you. You're claiming that you would have told me, but how am I supposed to know that? How am I supposed to know there aren't other lies? And uh, I mean, those are that's the only lie that maybe Elijah knew about. How am I to know that you're not going to lie to me again for your own purposes to make yourself look better so that I will stay with you or something? Like, it's just not okay. It's it's pretty devastating. Yeah, absolutely. You didn't have a choice. Elijah brought it up. And if he you brought it up because forever, I wanted to tell you. That's why he brought it up. But he knew that I was scared. I just didn't want to ruin the good days we've had so far. And I don't think it would have. I think for him, I don't think he would, would have, if she would have told him while it was happening, I think Kayla would have been like, oh, okay. I, I've been saying that from the beginning. I don't, And he's basically indicated that. He, he's not particularly upset about, because... 
they had never met each other in person while they were. I th- so I, th- I think what, from my understanding, is they've been online friends for 13 years prior to meeting each other in person in Turkey. And then at some point, it became more romantic. And at that point, she was still in a relationship. She frames it as she was living with her ex. She, yeah, li- with her current ex, but at in, she was living with her partner who was a partner at the time. She was cheating, I think. I'm 90% sure of that based on her account. She was cheating on her current partner by having an emotional romantic affair with Caleb. And so that's another thing that would concern you uh, if you're Caleb. And so she started and uh, was flirting and saying, let's meet up. And then at some point she breaks up with her current partner and then meets up with him. I don't know what the time frame there is, but I don't think that he would have minded. I think if she would have said right from the beginning, uh, by the way, I'm currently with someone right now and I'm questioning the relationship. I just thought you should know that. And I, I really like you and I really want to pursue things with you and see how things go. But I'm terrified if I tell you that I'm, I'm still in a relationship but then you have to say, well, why didn't you just break up with him and, and flirt with him, flirt with Caleb after breaking up? Like, there's just a lot of questions there. Okay. Caleb lost a bit of trust in me, and I feel awful about it. But I think that Caleb is just still not certain, and he might be using the fact that I kept a secret from him as an excuse to not think about our future. Yeah, uh, so maybe it's possible. It would be an, an an absolutely relevant detail to focus on regarding their future. But I think that she's using him using an excuse as an excuse to blame him and pressure him to commit. If I were their couples therapist, I would one introduce this idea that they just you know for you, Alina, it sounds like. Prior to meeting in, for, in person, you've been developing expectations and a relationship with him. It sounds like for you, Caleb, you were flirting, but you really don't frame it as a real relationship for you until you met in person. And so for you, the relationship began a week ago. And for you, Alina, the relationship began, I don't know, maybe years ago. And that's a difference and that's okay. Each of you can have that difference, but that explains the disconnect when it comes to an expectation about expectations and about commitments to each other. So there's that. The other thing that I would drill down on with Caleb is, so given what you know right now, where are you on the ladder of commitment? Because he keeps saying like, I need to think about it. I'm guessing if he were to be honest, he would say, well, you know, I'm enjoying dating her. There. I just found out something that's pretty concerning. But, you know, my typical way of dating is I date people for years before I even think about getting married. And I'm at the very beginning of that process. So might this result in marriage? Sure. I'm not going to say no to that. But how am I supposed to know? I mean, we just started dating, according to my vibes, a week ago. So why would you be pressuring? So she keeps this attitude of like, how come you're not committing? And then Elijah piles on and it's just like, "You, you just met, like, just relax. He doesn't want to make decisions, and he wants space, and I don't understand. Just come say goodbye to Elijah when you're done. Usually, this is the result of insecurity and past relational abandonment and uh, this pressure and hypervigilance around do you love me? Are you committed? Are, are we getting married? It's a it's a shade of love bombing in a sense, or it's a comes from a similar place. But I'm a little bit worried about Caleb's reactions, uh, his bad emotions, uh, and his madness. I'm afraid that Alina might be heartbroken at the end. I really wanted to tell him uh-huh. without your interve- intervention, but what's done is done. Yes. All right. So. Elijah is concerned about him getting mad. Uh, I'm not. (laughs) I think Caleb's anger is completely justified, particularly his expression of the anger. He didn't get violent. He didn't get insulting. He didn't get hostile. He's just like, I'm upset that you lied to me. (laughs) I think it's totally human and normal and fair for him 
to have that. He could have had a bigger expression based on what happened in my gauge. And the other thing we're seeing here is that Alina is saying, uh, I wish essentially you wouldn't have outed me, but what's done is done. It's interesting. So let's see if Elijah, the morning after or the next couple days later, can say, yeah, sorry about that. And by the way, sorry for breaking in on the two of you and leering at your boyfriend. It's you know a semi-criminal act that I committed. Let's see if he apologizes. I don't know, like, uh, give him a little space and time to think, to sort out things. But by the end of this trip, you should know, like, what 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 is going on between you two? Yeah. Like, is it going somewhere or, not? or it isn't? Yeah, that's the, another assumption that the two of them are basing everything on is either it's going somewhere or it's not. How about you don't know <laughs> because you just started dating in person a week ago. If you were dating someone and a week into it or even a few months and someone was like, look, you better tell me where this is headed because or else. Now, he could say, like I was saying earlier, well, yeah, I mean, maybe, but I'm not going to know just so you know for years. If you're talking about like engagement to get married, I'm not going to know for years in all likelihood. I mean, I guess there's a chance I'll know sooner than that, but I, I can't imagine myself having that certainty within a year or two. So maybe, but how am I supposed to know that? I, I can't I can't tell you. It has that potential. I'm going to take a guess and say that that would alleviate Alina's anxiety, but the fact that they're they're trying to get hit, they're like either you're with us or against us. Either you say we're going to get married or we're done. And it's like, why would you be that way? Really feel each other out. Mm, I see. I feel like I've been very patient with Caleb so far. I've always heard this. I need more time, not too soon. And I respected it. But now it's not going to work, this excuse. I don't think you've respected it. I think from minute one, you have been at the very least disapproving, uh, possibly emotionally pressuring every time he says in a very, now she can want to go fast. That's okay. He can want to go slow. That's also okay. But she interprets it as you're not being a good partner because you're what, toying with me or you're a jerk. I don't understand what conclusion she's deriving from the fact that he is saying, look, we started dating in person a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I, I don't know where we stand. <laughs> you know, but. Anymore. Let's imagine this. I go back to Russia. You go back to the United States. Now, briefly, I will say that I get her concern because it's like, okay, we only have limited time. You're going to go back to States. I go back to Russia. I'm worried that it'll be really hard for us to get back together. I'm worried that if I don't have a, if we don't commit that you'll just drift away from me and you'd start dating other people or I'll start dating other people. And maybe that's another factor. She's thinking, well, if this isn't gonna work out, I have like, because they've said this, Elijah was saying this, that you've got a whole bunch of dudes in St. Petersburg just dying to date you. And so, you know, maybe, uh, I don't think that's a factor, but anyway. So, you know, I get her concerned, but it's, it's the, the approach that she's taking that I think is, unfairly pressuring. It's not the worst, you know, we've seen w worse versions of that pressuring. It's only two days left, you know. I don't know, maybe it just comes from a place of, you know, like not caring enough, maybe. What am I doing to make you not feel cared for? You are just very vague about me, about us. Uh, there's a portion of her request that I think is fine, which is, how do you feel about me? But instead of just asking that, she is pressuring and and criticizing. Because if she's like, you know, I think there are two questions that I think are totally fair. One, how do you feel about me? I'm just curious, you know, because I really like you. And, and um, but I, I don't, I don't know if this is just a temporary thing, or you just kind of like me, you know, how do you feel about it? And the second question is, where, when we go back to our respective towns, at this point, what are you thinking? Like, what what are you hoping for after this? Do, do you want to continue to try? Do you want to? Is this just a fling? Uh, what's what's what is your plan? You could absolutely ask that, but that's not 
the way she's asking, right? There's a different tone to the way she's asking. About what's going to be after we leave Turkey. I just want to know if you are, like, if you are open, even open to be exclusive or not. You're, you're trying to ask me if I'll be your boyfriend. Right. So I think he should respond. I think that she's asking at least nice enough and she seems open that he should definitely tell her where she's at, where he's at. The dichotomy again is sort of present. It's like either you want to be exclusive or I'll consider this to be a rejection if you don't want to be exclusive to me right now. Where a lot of people are the sort of daters who don't get exclusive until weeks or months in. You should be honest about that. Let's see what he says. I can't go back home without an answer. Aliana is bringing up the topic of exclusivity, and I understand her interest in this, but to me, it seems a little bit soon. Good. So he's saying, you know, I get why she'd be interested, but for me, it's soon. Okay, just tell her. Just say, eh, I'm sorry, but for me, I'm not really looking for an exclusive thing right now. It's not you. It's just... I don't want to be exclusive with anyone. Um, I'd love to continue dating you and to, uh, you know, still explore that. But, you know, I, I'm not ready to say I'm not going to date other people because I'm, I'm just not at that point with you yet. And then she could say, well, deal breaker. That's sad for me. Or I don't know. So it's let's see. But the key is, is you have to be straightforward. I think they're definitely at a phase where she's especially given the parameters around, you know, temporarily seeing each other and then not, that she's totally within her right to be like, I need some clarification about where this is and where we're going. I think another way to phrase it from her is, Caleb, I would like to be exclusive. That's my hope. I want you to want to be exclusive with me as well. But I don't know where you're standing. Would you like to be exclusive? You know, essentially, it's like proposing, right? You're it's it's a ladder, it's a rung up the ladder of like, I, I'm going to get down on my knee and say, would you please be in an exclusive relationship with me? And then he can say yes or no. Let's see what happens. Are you afraid of commitment? Yeah, that's, that's a, a daunting question. It's not something I'm against. It's just been a question for me of the right person. And I've been trying to assess that in you. So what is your... It's not a great way to phrase it. <laughs> Fear of commitment, that phrase has always kind of bothered me because no one's afraid of commitment. They're afraid of being hurt and they're afraid of hurting other people, which makes a lot more sense, right? If you commit, if, if you have a history of having committed in the past prematurely out of pressure or confusion and then either broke up with that person or cheated on them because you learn later like, oh, I guess I'm not ready for a commitment, then you realize, oh, I need to be careful about who I commit to because that could lead to either pain for them or pain for me. You know, another pain is like I commit and the person breaks up with me or cheats on me. And so, you know, crossing that threshold, you're not afraid of that threshold. You're afraid of hurting some. It's like people aren't afraid of falling from a bridge. They're afraid of landing on the ground, not to get morbid about it, but because sometimes people say, oh, he has a fear of commitment. And because I think the phrase confuses people to thinking like, well, certain people, they just, because it sounds illogical. It's like, well, why are you afraid of commitment? Why are you so afraid of commitment? So she's asked, you know, are you afraid of commitment? He's like, well, you know, it is kind of a thing. And so it's good that he can, he doesn't say, I'm not afraid. You know, what are you saying? He's just, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a big deal to me. But then the other way he phrases it is not the best way. He's like, well, I'm over here evaluating. It's all about like, I'm, I'm only going to commit to someone that I have evaluated to be worthy of my... He does, he's not saying that, but like you see it coming across that way. Let's see what she says. Answer. You're not ready yet or what? I want to experience what life is like with you more. So I wish he were more direct, but he's essentially saying that, yeah, I'm not ready yet. But I think he should just say that. Yeah, Alina, I'm sorry. I'm just not ready. I want to. I want to continue to date you if you'll have me, but I'm not ready to commit. And maybe, but he's not saying that. And maybe this is where he's either lying or just failing to disclose of is a commitment possible in the future, and when would you predict that may or may not happen? Because I could see a version of him saying like, "Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to want to commit one with her." 
uh, given what I know about myself and given how I feel about her. Or he could say, yeah, I mean, if things go well over the next six months, I could see a commitment happening at that time. And I wonder how she would feel if he was just a little bit more wordy. And I wish this wasn't being put to the question right now, because I feel like this is being forced on me. But if it's a on-the-spot answer, then... It's not on the spot. I've been asking you this almost the whole... I don't think it's fair to say to her, I don't understand why this is even brought up, is essentially what he's saying. I don't understand why me even being asked this. I think he has a legitimate gripe against her tone and her rigid expectation, but it's not a bad conversation. It's not an unfair conversation to have, especially given the circumstances, right? Now, I'm going to take a guess and say that he's used to dating people, or at least the majority of the people that he's dating. The threshold of commitment is very far down in terms of time, maybe six months, 12 months down the line. And so for him, I'm guessing he comes from a, a, a cultural pocket where it's like why are we even talking about this like that's it's not it's not normal why are you bringing this up I'm, i wonder if that's where he's coming from whole trip it's not that simple Alina. if we could make this trip another week or two i might be able to say yes if you were in america with me might. i could maybe say yes might be <laughs> yeah might be <laughs> the interpretation that i get from alina and I guess Elijah as well, is that Caleb is playing a game or he's lying or something. What is weird about having dating someone for a little bit of time and saying like, I might be willing to commit in the future. I don't know. But she, she's like, oh, you might be. Now, as we often talk about, it's usually a result of insecurity and pain from your past that you impose on the present. And I'm just guessing that's where it comes from. Needs that need to be met. You need someone who can pay you attention and, and help you in those ways. I don't want to take that lightly. So one big reason I'm taking time is to make sure I can be the person who can do that. I, I think you deserve someone who can do everything you need in terms of being your aid. Okay. I mean, that's not irrational. I don't think this is the time to bring that up. I mean... Given the demeanor of the conversation, I'm guessing she'll say, okay, yeah, I mean, I guess I do need some help, but I, I'm not asking for an aid. <laughs> do you, you don't have to be that all the time. That's Is that how you see me? But it is a rational factor of the reality of being in a relationship with her is, you know, there, there's an element of that, of assisting at times. I, I think she's pretty independent but, you know, sometimes she needs to be pushed in a wheelchair. Given where they're at in the conversation, I could see that really hurting her. I'm just like, ouch. Yeah, right. It's just always sounds like a boot to me when people say, oh, maybe I'm not good enough for you. It's basically what are you saying now? That wasn't what I said. Yeah, I mean, that isn't what I heard either. Maybe... It was what he was saying, but I think she's, again, hearing past conversations in the present of people that are, I guess, saying, I'm not good enough for you. And it just sounds like a BS way of breaking up with someone. People will do that sometimes. People being broken up with will see through that and be like, no. <laughs> Plus, we could imagine the pandering that she might get at times, which is pretty gross. I mean, we are having fun. It's like the relationship is has to be built on a friendship. It's usually very good when it's like that. And we already have it. What else do you want? I think when the guy is in love, he, he just goes and gets what he wants. Yeah, um, but no. <laughs> I don't know, maybe where she comes from, people get engaged in the second week. And again, maybe she thinks our relationship is 13 years old and I've been in love with you this whole time. Uh, he clearly doesn't see it that way. It's okay if they have that difference, but I don't know. It's just, it's frustrating to see people just misunderstanding each other so much and not really taking the time to really understand where the other person is coming from and speaking to them from that place. You know, because from her standpoint, she'd be like, okay, so what I'm hearing, if I don't get emotional about it, is that you might be willing to commit in the future, which I'll have to say, I'm ready to commit now, which it hurts that you're not ready to commit now, and it worries me. But, you know, I can see where you're coming from because, you know, I did lie to you and you have some concerns about that, you know, but she's not saying that, right? She's it, she's accusing, she's 
hostile in a subtle way. She's putting things in his head that he's not saying. What do you think I'm doing here when I say I want more time? I am trying to get what I want, which is you in the proper way. So I'm saying give me more time. But that, that isn't apparently what can happen here because you need to leave with an answer. And if that's what you need, I respect that. But this is what I need. I need more time. I think her and Elijah interpret I need more time to be he's playing games. I'm pretty sure of that, that she interprets that as a passive way of saying I don't like you. Maybe that's from her past. It hurts me. I feel like we have so much here that I wish you could wait. I just can't go back and everything is back to normal, how it was before. I can't handle this. And this is better. I think we're getting to the emotions instead of the intellectualization and the hostility and the accusations, the criticism. I think this is what is driving all that. It's like, I can't handle it. If we go back and it goes back to the way things were, it's going to tear me apart. I think I stated it clearly. Yes or no? I don't know if there's anything more to talk about right now. Uh, well, it really got boiled down to those last two sentences that were exchanged. It's either yes or no. What? <laughs> yes or no commitment? Uh, okay, how about no, but maybe in the future? Why does it have to be black and white? And then instead of him giving a little bit more elaborate, he, I think he's been elaborate enough, but I think she needs more elaboration. Instead of elaborating more, he's just like, well, I can't talk about that right now. <laughs> I don't have, I don't think I have anything more to say. I'm not asking Caleb to marry me or to move to Russia immediately. Let's go. But it kind of hurts that he doesn't know by now. Does he want to be with me or not? I know, I want to be with him. Yeah, you hear that interpretation. It's, it's, it hurts that he doesn't know if he wants to be with me. He does want to be with you. He just doesn't know if he wants to commit. He doesn't know if he's at that t at that place yet. It's fine that you want a commitment. It's fine that he's not ready for that. And I just really feel played. I just need more time, and you. Right. That was my impression. That she she she's. I feel played. I feel like I'm being tricked. Like I'm being used, because he won't commit. So. I think that's what she's hanging everything on. She's like, if he'll commit, then he's not playing me. If he doesn't commit, then he's playing me. And it's like, huh? Well, I don't think listen, you love me. You don't love me. You're projecting You're not things. even in love with me. You're not listening to what I'm care. saying. You don't love me. You don't. So I'm wondering if this is the result of past traumas. We've heard some indications of her past relationships, but this, and then we wonder if she feels like if he goes back to the States and dates other women, does she have some internalized you know, ableism that makes her think like she can't compete on that level and is terrified of the result of that um, in a distorted way? Maybe not, so to sort of, I don't know. But point is, is I think we're getting at what is driving the rigidity right now, the pain that she is, that she's probably felt for a while. Go left up here. Maybe this answer should be easier than I'm making it out to be. I want this to be a yes, but I just can't give her that yes right now. She's forcing an answer, so she's creating a no for herself. Yeah, that's a pretty good way of putting it. It's like, uh, I don't know, I don't, it's a maybe. But since she was forcing an answer, forcing me to say yes yes, or it's no, then she's making it a no when it's, it's not a no, it's a maybe. There's the reality that maybe I go home and I realize I should have said yes, and I really miss her. I, I just don't know what to do. I think you should just sleep on the couch. Yeah. I don't know, but I was wondering if in that moment she it was a, if she was fishing. I, I don't know, but and she doesn't usually do this, but if she was testing him a little bit. Yeah, I think you should sleep on the couch. I think there's a part of her maybe that was hoping he would say, "Oh, really? I was I really wanted to at least sleep next to you." And I, I'm wondering if she was hoping that would happen because you know she's she was looking at him. Now she could have been looking at him like, 
he's gonna he's not gonna like that. Um, so I don't know. I'm just speculating, of course. All right. Well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.